Well, hello, you. I didn't see you there. Thank you for joining my quick bite. Because we're going to be talking Netflix's You. What's going down, everybody? And welcome back to a very special Am I on the Air quick bite, where today we're going to be reviewing the first half of season four of You. And that's right. You, for those of you that don't know, is a really awesome show on Netflix that is going into its fourth season as you're hearing this. Right when this episode drops, season four will be dropping on Netflix. And I wanted to take a couple minutes to come at you and break down, non-spoiler, just some thoughts. Kind of where we're at, where we're going, and uh, where we might be heading, right? Um, But before we get started, I want to shout out the Pop Culture Pros. This episode is in conjunction with them, and uh, we appreciate their partnership here to be able to review you early. Because, yes, I've already watched the episodes of you, uh, and I've been holding on tightly to my thoughts because of a thing called an embargo where you're not allowed to talk about stuff. And I don't like embargoes, especially when you have positive things to say and you're like clutching at the moment to be able to talk about it and you're not allowed to. Uh, I don't know why the embargo for you uh, literally drops the minute that the episodes drop. I know they're afraid of stuff being spoiled, um, but you know, I have a non-spoiler review, so they, they have nothing to really worry about. Um, but yes, I have seen part one of you. I've actually seen part two as well. So I've seen the entire fourth season, but I can't talk about the second half of you yet. We'll be bringing you guys a separate episode in about a month because that's right. You need to manage your expectations as only the first half of the fourth season will be available on February 9th. You're going to have to wait another month for March 9th to be able to see the second half. It's 10 episodes, first five are dropping, and then the other five, like I said, on March 9th. But this time gives you some time to really come up with your theories and speculate what's going down, right? This worked actually pretty well with Stranger Things when they kind of broke up the last season. So let's recap a little bit, right? In the last episode of season three, Joe Goldberg, played by Penn Badgley, was seen walking the streets of Paris anonymously, suggesting that he had fled the country after committing murder, giving up his child, and pretending to die. As expected of Joe Goldberg, his actions indicate that he went to Paris in pursuit of Mary Ann, who had uncovered the truth about his dangerous and violent ways in the season three finale. However, he won't be staying in Paris for the entire fourth season, but rather most of the time, it'll be set in London, where he has taken on a new identity, he's found a new job, and he's also found a new group of people to potentially wreak havoc upon. Um, Very, very interesting here. So, hopefully, you have seen seasons one, two, three, right? I mean, if you haven't, this show is about Joe Goldberg. He's a real nice guy who just wants to find love. That's it. He just wants to be loved and he wants to find love. But unfortunately, he's got bad luck. (laughs) Things come his way that cause him to sometimes commit murder, uh, to do things he shouldn't be doing. And we've seen that from season one to season two. Uh, In season two, he found his true love in a lady named Love, uh, which is pretty funny. Uh, And then Love got pregnant and they had a kid and we went into season three with this like power couple that was just as crazy as each other. He had met his match, but of course things go awry uh, and Love actually tries to kill Joe at the end of season three, but he breaks out, of course, ends up killing Love uh, and then wanting to find what he thinks is his new true love, Mary Ann, which Mary Ann, like I said, is taken off to Paris. So Joe fakes his own death. He goes over to Paris to find her. And here we are. Right. And once again, this is non-spoiler. So what I'll tell you is this season here kicks off where you would think it would, right? He is now in London. He is going by a new name of Jonathan Moore. He's got a job at a prestigious college and he falls in with this like rich crew, right? A bunch of richy kids, snobby kids that take him kind of into their group 
And, uh, but he's just trying to find Marianne. He wants to find Marianne and he wants to let her know like, Hey, I'm here for you. Right? Like you're my love. I'm not going to hurt you, but she's super afraid of him. Right? She thinks he's going to kill her and she's got a daughter and, and she's worried. And of course, Joe is like, dude, like I just need to find her and let her know that I love her and everything will be okay. Um, so I'm going to leave that there, that that's one portion of the story is him trying to find Marianne and kind of take it, you know, uh, to the next level. Now where things get shifty, um, is basically the story kind of goes in a different route here, um, for the first five episodes here where we end up with Joe, who's now Jonathan Moore being in the middle of a murder. Uh, somebody in his group is murdered and of course all eyes go into him, right? Because he's the new guy of the group and all of a sudden there's this murder and it's like, huh, one of these things is not like the other. And, um, and, and so, but, but Joe is confused, right? He's like, what? I didn't do this. Now I need to find like, who's after me, right? Someone is trying to frame him. And I loved this side of the story is that we are now on this search of Joe trying to figure out who framed him. Are there going to be more murders? Are there going to be more deaths going on that are going to frame him, try to get him into trouble? Now, remember, he's going under under another name, so he doesn't want to be involved with cops. He doesn't want to be talking to them because they might figure out who he truly is, right? So I like the murder mystery aspect of this, of him trying to figure out who is setting him up. Um, the voiceover in this season seemed a little extreme. I will say that. I know he always kind of did a voiceover and kind of talked to himself throughout the show, but I felt like it was really, really heavy in this season. Um, not that it super bothered me, but it just stood out to me a little bit. Um, so in this cast, you have a whole new cast now, right? Because of course you have Penn Badgley as Joe Goldberg, now known as Jonathan Moore. You've got Tati Gabrielle back as Marianne Bellamy, Joe's former librarian boss and obsession from season three. But then you get all new people, right? We get introduced to Charlotte Ritchie as Kate, who will be Joe's newest obsession, despite her disliking him from the get-go. She must also uh, she may also be on to his dark secrets, maybe. Stephen Hagen is Malcolm, an out-of-touch party boy and Kate's boyfriend. Lucas Gage, who will play a rich kid and fellow expat Adam, a gambler and owner of the club where a friend group likes to party. Tilly Keeper as Lady Phoebe, a popular socialite in Kate's BFF. She's also Adam's girlfriend. Ed Spielers as Rise Montrose, an eccentric author and aspiring politician. He worked his way up after being born into poverty and seems to be the most level-headed of the friend group. Ben Wiggins as Road, um, another uh, uh, longtime friend of Kate's who may be hiding his own dark secrets. Amy Lee Hickman as Professor Moore's literature student, Nadia. Uh, she's a very important character here. And Eve Austin as Gemma, probably the most tone deaf of the elite Oxford friend group. Um, so you, he falls in, like I said, with this new Richie group. And then it becomes this who's who, what's going on, um, who can you trust, and who's doing these damn murders, right? <laughs> Is it Joe? Is it not Joe? Of course, I'm trying to figure that out. Who's setting him up? Who might know? his secrets. So I'm going to leave it at that. Like I said, I don't want to spoil anything. What I will say is I love the tone of this season. I think it's great. I think it's something different um, that what we were used to because we've, this is the fourth season. So, you know, you got to start to do something different. You know, season one was all about this weird love that turned to murder. And then season, but it was an accident, right? And then season two, he starts to do it a little bit more, but then finds the love of his life. So, okay, something a little different. And then season three was about the family, right? He's married now. He's got a kid. All right, a little something different, but now we're murdering together as a family. And then now we have this new season where he's in Paris and London and he's being set up and now we're trying to find out who is committing these murders. I like it. Right. In an interview with entertainment tonight, Badgley gave a sneak peek into the new season saying the tone is similar, but it's shifting and that there's a different format. It's almost like we're shifting the genre slightly. The series is classified as a murder mystery where the audience tries to guess who the killer is. This time, however, the tables have turned and Joe will be the one being pursued. I love it. I love it. 
right? Um, so there you go, man. That is season f- uh, four, the fir- part one, the first five episodes kind of in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait to talk about part two with you guys uh, and tell you kind of where it goes and, and kind of like uh, beam a little bit. Um, which this is a roller coaster, man. This show is a roller coaster. I was obsessed. I was hooked. This is one of my favorite shows. I loved season one. Season two was better. Season three was better than that. This show gets better and better and better. Um, season four plays its role, man. And, uh, I don't know if it's my favorite of the bunch, because I really did like season two and three. And I, I missed love in this season because she was such a great character. Um, but, but I just, I really do like the show. I like the concept. This is one of my main go-to shows that when an article comes out, a trailer comes out, when it gets renewed, um, when the show is streaming, I have a blast watching it and talking with friends and going over theories and, you know, um, there's a lot of people that like this one, man. This is definitely one of these shows that I gravitate to. I love it. Cause you know, I'm a big fan of like Dexter and stuff like that. And you kind of falls into that kind of genre. And, uh, so yeah, big thumbs up for me, for you season four dropping right now, the first five episodes on Netflix. So make sure you run to Netflix, you click it on and enjoy it, man. Let me know what you thought. That'll wrap it up for me for my non-spoiler review. Thank you so much for listening to this quick bite. My name is Don Mega. Follow me on Twitter at DXDonMega. Make sure you follow the show at Am I on the Air. Got two podcast feeds, Am I on the Air, our regular show, and Am I on the Air Quick Bites, this one right here with the quick bites of information. AmIontheAir.com will take you to everything else. I'm going to get on out of here, and I will be back in a month to talk about the second half, part two of you season four. And until then, guys, keep it classy. We'll catch you later. Peace.